I've already put some tapping fluid in there. This is the plug tap. Now you might have to press down a little harder to get that to engage. Now it's drawing in there pretty nicely. But uh, watch for straightness. It's real easy to go crooked with a plug tap. Go again about a half a turn, back it off. and there are, uh, Some chips are flying out when I do that. You may not be able to see that. And be careful as you approach the bottom, especially with smaller taps, so you don't uh, turn it too uh, fast, hit the bottom and break the tap. Now that's not going to happen with this big tap in a soft metal like aluminum. I chose aluminum because I can do this a little faster and I'm on the bottom. I can feel that. I, th I guess that comes with uh, experience. Now we're going to back that out. Now. If there are chips in there, you need to either blow it out or bang them out of there, or you may not get to the full depth. Now we're taking the bottoming tap and going in there, and it should start real easily, and it won't do much cutting until we get near the bottom. Now I can feel it starting to cut, and I'm already on the bottom. And I've got uh, a hole that's tapped as, as close to the bottom as practical. Whenever you have a blind hole, if at all possible, uh, drill it as deeply as you can and uh, use uh, thick metal. Uh, a shallow blind hole is difficult to tap. It may not work for you. I hope some of these tips that I've just given you on tapping hand tapping are useful. Our next one will be some uh, tapping on the drill press and the lathe but not under power just using the machi machines to assist us for straightness. Okay I'm going to tap a hole on the drill press now and the reason I'm doing it on the drill press is that uh, the hole will then be tapped perfectly straight. So I have drilled a hole 530 seconds and I'm going to tap it uh, 1032. This is aluminum, anodized aluminum, very thin. And uh, we know that that hole is perfectly aligned with the drill. So take the tap, 1032 tap, and we'll remove the uh, drill. And I'm going to put this little spring loaded device in there that will. Uh, it's cup shaped on the end so it'll fit this pointed end of the tap. Now that's spring loaded. And it doesn't need to be very tight. We're not turning the machine on. But now that uh, will hold the tap in alignment. Bring that down. This is spring loaded, so I'm going to put a little bit of a load on it. I'm going to lock the quill, and then I'm just going to proceed to tap this. And we know that that's going to be perfectly straight. And this can be done with different sizes of uh, taps. Very soft metal, so it's easy to do. Then when you back it out, you don't have to worry about stripping the hole or breaking the tap, because uh, the spring will recede. Now we're going to tap on the lathe, but not under power. Again, we're doing it just so that we maintain perfect alignment and a nice square thread. And I'm just tapping a piece of aluminum with a quarter twenty tap, and it's been drilled 1364. So that's what I've got in the chuck. The machine is in back gears to lock it, and I'm using a spring-loaded center here, which is a beautiful thing uh, to use uh, when you're tapping. Uh, they're kind of expensive though, and I'm feeding in a little bit with my tailstock and putting a little bit of a load on this. A, and then when you back out, the spring will back out so you don't have to worry about stripping the thread. Now as you get in there a little deeper, you can uh, back the center off because it's no longer doing anything. I back the center off and just finish it now and I'll have a perfect straight thread. And I'm going to show you uh, a couple different ways to do that now. 
This is essentially the same setup I had on the drill press a few minutes ago. A spring-loaded uh, center here also. Those are available from any machine shop suppliers. They have the cup center or a pointed center. This is the cup center again. And uh, just put the end of your tap in there. And i got to back the compound out a little ways so that it doesn't interfere. I'm not tapping a hole here. I'm just showing you how to do it and uh, then you're ready to go, but put a little bit of pressure on that. As you get into larger holes, you can use this type of tap wrench, or you can simply use a, a crescent wrench to turn the tap. And again, we got the spring-loaded center in there, and a piece of aluminum. And now we're ready to tap. I hope my hand isn't in the way. Anybody notice anything I'm doing wrong? Well, actually, I'm not doing anything wrong. I have a left-hand tap. I am feeding the tailstock hand wheel with my other hand. And then backing it off. A little spring center there will uh, compensate for that backing up. And it would just continue until you're all the way through. That's a left-hand tap. That's why I had painted it orange many years ago. When I'm tapping uh, small holes with a small tap, number 10 or under, I often use this homemade uh, tap wrench. And uh, I've incorporated a commercial tap wrench into a piece of tubing here, and that slides on a half-inch rod. That allows me to do all the turning just with my hand grip. So you really get a good feel of how hard you're turning. And this just slides back and forth. And we've got some brass in here. And this is a 1024 tap. I've already started it. And you're just going to turn that. And then as you back it off, see it'll slide back up here. And you have a real good feel for how hard you're turning it. But I don't think you can buy those. That's, that's one that I made some time ago. Now we're going to power tap in the lathe. I'm simply holding a quarter twenty tap in the chuck. Now if it's real hard material you might have problems with that because the, the tap is uh, so hard that the chuck doesn't grip it very well. Here's another type of tap holder that I sometimes use and uh, that, that works good. Now I don't recommend this on a lathe that has a threaded spindle. This has the uh, long taper spindle so it, the chuck can't spin off. Do this at, at very slow speeds and oil your ways so that the tailstock can move freely because we're not going to lock the tailstock. So I'm going to turn the machine on and I've got a clutch on this lathe. So when I get in there deep enough I'll just back the clutch on. Now it pulls itself in. When I've gone in far enough I just turn the clutch off, and I'm going to reverse the machine, and then back it out. Don't do this in a blind hole. You could break the tap off. Be sure and wear safety glasses in case you do break the tap. I hope these hints on tapping have been helpful. This is Tubal Kane saying... So long for now.